We are on live Facebook. Uh, uh, just seconds. Okay. You hear me now? Hear me? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it's better. It's better okay. than now. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I will introduce uh, you, dear professor, and then uh, we we can start now. Uh, we are lucky to uh, to have uh, in this institutes uh, today uh, our professor and, and my friend, uh, Professor Dr. Holga, the associate professor of uh, anesthesiology and also a diagnostic and interventional entity to grapple his well-known, reputable, and one of the uh, eminent one that too, uh, I think when you say he him on stage in any conference and any meetings, he's amazing, is uh, one of the uh, love uh, best. It's right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. yeah you, uh, so, uh, the, 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 so today, it will be on health pathology, ultrasonography, and intervention. This, uh, uh, I think, one of the most common problems we can see in different uh, perspectives on medical fields. So uh, now the stage with you, dear Professor Tonga. We can start. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, first, uh, I would like to thank you for the nice invitation. And uh, uh, the next one are uh, I will be talking about the hip joint and how to begin a written examination with ultrasonography. And uh, I will try to show some interventional procedure uh, example. In this presentation, I have prepared for you uh, transducer positioning and anatomical illustration and ultrasound image uh, of the common hip structure. So, now I would like to share my screen now. Okay. Okay. Great. Now we can you can see my screen now. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, I would like to disclosure about something. I have no, nothing to disclose or financial interest. Uh, I'm a founder of Akazapain Center. And um, in this presentation, I'm using complete anatomy platform, which copyright by uh, HAL 3D for medical LTD from Alzheimer. Uh, I have an educator license uh, about this uh, platform. This is my educator license. So uh, when, when we have the education license of this uh, application, we can use our presentation. Once again, uh, welcome to the, my presentation. Ultrasound machine, you, you know, gonna be smaller and uh, smarter than past. All these three machines I use in my daily practice. When we talk about the hip joint ultrasound graphy, uh, it, would, it would be best to begin by talking about the anatomy and the sonar anatomy of the hip joint. You know, sonar anatomy uh, is totally different than classical anatomy. Uh, you have to know uh, the differences. Let's start the position of the patient. The, during the examination of the hip joint. For the, for the best view of the sonogram, the patient's position is very important. The patient position should be changed in which compartment they want to examine. There are four compartments at the hip joint when are examining with ultrasonography. Anterior, posterior, lateral, medial, uh, there is a four compartment. Some of us are say window. I'm calling that compartment. It's, it's, it's not matter. What, what do you want to choose? Compartment or window? It's not important. For imagining the anterior compartment uh, of the hip joint, the patient lies spine on the examination bed. 
with the lower limbs in extension and milled external rotation. For the medial compartment, milled hip and knee flexion with the external rotation and the abduction of the femur might be necessary. It's like a figure of four position. For the lateral compartment, the patient lies fine or in contralateral decubit position. I prefer usually contralateral decubit position before examining lateral uh, hip joint. For the posterior compartment, I'm sure the patient lies in front position and the legs in extension position. Another important issue, uh, choosing the transducer. A multifrequency linear transducer is suggested, especially the, for the obese patient, uh, lower frequency or convex transducer would be something be required. Let's gonna start with anterior compartment. This is anterior compartment. When you need to examine anterior compartment, your transduction is positioned longitudinally, parallel to the long par parallel to the long axis of the distal femur, and the transducer should be moved proximally. When the transducer turns twenty or twenty-five degree, or exactly parallel to the neck of the neck of the femur, over to the hip joint, this is a sagittal plane. We can see some anatomic structure. One two and three basic moment. One, two and three. It's, it's, it's very easy. What we can see at the sonogram at this position of the transducer, we can see labrum. This is the anterior labrum anterior superior labrum. This is the posterior labrum. We can see clearly anterior labrum, femoral head. This is the femoral head, neck of the femur, neck of the femur, and this is acetabulum. Acetabulum is here. You can see clearly. The most important structure here, joint space. You can see joint space at the joint of the femoral head and neck. When would you like to into articular injection? Your target is here. If you move your transducer a little bit uh, medially, you can see other anatomic structures. Two muscle can be visualized in this position. One of the muscle is psoas muscle, and one of is iliacus muscle. In this view, you can see labrum and acetabulum as well. Labrum. This is Uh, head of the femur. This is an acetabulum here. This is a labrum. And you can see this tendon here, iliopsoas tendon. When you turn your transducer 90 degree, you can see this muscle and iliopsoas tendon with the axial plane. Like this. This is an iliopsoas tendon here. Iliopsoas muscle, iliopsoas muscle, and head of the femur. At the anterior window of the hip, we can see some vascular structures as a femoral artery, femoral vein, 
and some muscle and nerves. When you put your transducer parallel to the medial part of the inguinal ligament, you can see pectinase muscle as well. Starting from the, okay, you, you can see in this sonogram, femoral artery, femoral vein, this muscle, and this is a pectinase muscle as well. And starting from the anterior superior iliac spine, the proposition is a parallel to the alignment of the inguinal ligament. You can see, you can see the tensor fascia lata and the sartorius muscle. This is a sartorius muscle and this is a tensor fascia lata. Anterior superior iliac spine, acoustic shadow here and the lateral side, you can see tensor fascia lata and the medial side, you can see clearly the sartorius muscle. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is usually seen immediately deep in the medial to the inguinal ligament attachment on the iliac bone. This is a very important structure at the anterior compartment. You can see anterior superior iliac spine, acoustic shadow, and uh, inguinal ligament, and lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This is an axial view of the sonogram like this. When the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment, sometimes we need to hydrodissection over the hair. Uh, this is a medial compartment of the hip. For the medial compartment, mild hip and knee flexion and external rotation and abduction of the femur uh, might be necessary. This is, we call that the figure of four position. At the medial compartment, we can see another anatomic structures. Such a pectineus muscle, adductor longus muscle, and gracilis muscle, adductor longus muscle, and the adductor brevis. You can see other muscle, adductor magnus muscle is the deepest. In the medial compartment in the long axis view, the prop place the parallel to the alignment of the adductor, adductor muscles, starting from their origin from the pubic bone they can scan throughout their course. If you put at the, if you put at the origin side, the origin side, the muscle, you can see this wave. Yes, adductor longus, adductor brevis, and a magnus. This is a pubic bone. When you turn your transducer 19 degrees, you can see three muscle as the separate layer through their course. This is an axial view. Yes, exactly like this. This is an axial view of the three muscles. Adductor longus, brevis, and magnus. The lateral compartment, the transducer, can be positioned axially uh, on the greater trochanter, at the level of the greater trochanter. We can see some other anatomic structures. This is an axial view of the lateral compartment. 
what we can see at the sonogram. This is a greater trochanter. At this side, we can see the gluteus maximus. And this is a gluteus medius tendon. The anterior side of the greater uh, trochanter, we can see gluteus minimus tendon. At the superficial structure is the tensor fasciolata. You can see greater trochanter, anterior side, gluteus minimus tendon, posterior side, gluteus maximus, and you can see gluteus medius tendon. The posterior compartment at the hip joint, you can see lots of anatomic structure, which are very important. This is axial view of the transducer positioning. And this is a sonogram of the posterior compartment of the hip joint. You know, this is a scale tuberositas. This is a scale tuberosity like this. And the most superficial muscle is the gluteus maximus muscle. When you move your transducer to the laterally, you can see the ner nervus sciaticus. The sciatic nerve is the very important structure of the posterior hip. This is an axial view. You can see the nerve. This axial view, this is a longitudinal view. Ischium here, and this is an ischium. And the trochanter, greater trochanter, trochanter minus. When we see at the sonogram, this is the gluteus maximus, most superficial muscle, and sciatic nerve, femur, greater trochanter, ischium tuberositas. So uh, I, I would like to talk about some intervention uh, in my daily practice I'm usually use uh, in my clinic. The intra-articular joint injection of the hip, I would like to prefer this transducer position. It's exactly parallel to the neck of the femur. And I would like to use my needle with an in-plane approach. So when you use your needle exactly parallel to do your transducer. We call that uh, in-plane axis. When you use in-plane axis, you can see all body of the needle, point of the needle, end of the needle, and the shaft of the needle. You can see all of the needle. And intraarticular injection, when we would we like to do intraarticular injection of the hip joint, this is a basic approach of the injection. It's very easy and useful. The target point is the joint of the neck of the femur and the head of the femur. This is a good target of the intraarticular injection. What do, you, what do you want to inject? You, you can inject local anesthetic agent, ozone or steroid agent or PRP. This is a transducer position and the needle position. When you put into the capsule your local anesthetic agent or something else, you can see clearly extend of the joint capsule. This is injection of the intraarticular hip uh, in my pa patient. 
sometimes I prefer to verify with the fluoroscopy. This is my needle. The target is here. This is a capsule injected local anesthetic agent, and you can see clearly. And if you want to verify with fluoroscopy, contrast agent dying all the over of the neck of the femur. And you need to pay attention some vessel when you inject to intraarticular uh, injection of the hip. Maybe sometimes your needle trajectory pass through to this vessel. So you need to pay attention before injection. When you put your transducer here for the injection, you have to look for this vessel, which are lateral circumflex femoral artery. You need to open your Doppler. And sometimes you can't see, and sometimes you can see this mass, uh, you can see this vessel. So you have to change your trajectory of the needle. Sometimes we need to femoral nerve hydrodissection or femoral nerve injection. I'm usually used to implant approach again, the transducer position, position like this over the vein and artery and vein of the femoral vessel. This is an implant axis in plane approach, you can see through, through the needle, our trajectory like this. As I say to you, adductor tendon joint uh, always the pubis bone. And sometimes we need an adductor tendon injection. At this approach is in plane approach, we can see through the needle, lungus, brevis, and the magnus muscles here, the injection site here. Uh, this is out of plane approach. When you use out of plane approach, we can see only, only tip of the needle. You can't see whole the body of the needle. You can see it like this point. This is uh, Professor Levant Ustrakar uh, paper. And you can see all the needle. This is a dot for the adductor tendon injection. This is a point of view, okay? And sometimes we need a uh, scale bursa injection, especially scale bursitis. Uh, this is a normal Bursa, there is no fluid and there is no distension. And when accumulated some fluid into the bursa, you can see this bursa will expand it. So uh, there's other bursa, most important bursa is the greater torcanteric bursa. And this is a fluid collection in the thoracanteric bursa. Uh, how we can injection, uh, how, how we can perform an injection, the transverse position like this. This is a long axis position and the needle exactly to the parallel to the transducer. This is an in-plane approach. Okay, that's end of my presentation. Thank you for patience. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's very interesting uh, talk as usual, uh, the Professor Kolka. So, uh, in, uh, in, in, in most of well, your texts, uh, uh, you use, uh, I think, the Corbellinian room uh, in head uh, ultrasonography. Oh, Professor Kolka, you hear me? Sorry. Hello? Uh, 
Do you hear me? Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I can't see you, but it's uh, no problem. Uh, okay. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, he I'm hearing you, okay. Oh, ah, okay. Uh, my, my, my first question is, uh, is it preferable to do scanning for hip using linear or can be linear? Okay. I hear it, but it's very uh, distortion. Please repeat again. What, Sorry. What, what about this? Good? Oh, okay. Th th that's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Well, yeah. Uh, you no. prefer using uh, hip uh, ultrasonography with linear or curvy linear proof? Okay, that's that's good question. When when the uh, patient obese, uh, when he or she have a high body mass index, I prefer curve transducer, low 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 frequency transducer. But sometimes the patient very f uh, fit and low body mass index. Uh, at that time, I'm using linear or high, high frequency transducer. Yeah. Uh, my, my second question, what about the uh, uh, optimal site to, to inject in the lateral femoral cutaneous? It is at the level of inguinal, just a little bit uh, to anterior spherical spine, or just above uh, in relation to iliopsoas. Okay. Uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is a very, very tiny nerve. So uh, we, we, we cannot say all the time. So um, this is a very near the anterior superior iliac spine. We, 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 we need to we, we need to put our transducer uh, over the anterior superior iliac spine. So maybe we can see over there immediately the medial side and the deep side of the anterior superior iliac spine. But sometimes we cannot see exactly uh, we cannot see good visualization at the, this point. Uh, the, but uh, it's not a big problem. I usually uh, prefer the diagnostic block uh, for the entrapment of the uh, for the entrapment of the this nerve. If my diagnostic block works, after that I'm using a pulse radiofrequency for the long term pain pal palliation. Yeah, that's great. Uh, okay, uh, uh, so uh, uh, you, you prefer to inject the hip joint from anterior approach, just only? Yes, anterior approach. Yeah, it is preferable and so easy. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, I must do that. Thank you again, dear Professor uh, Tolga. Hope, Thank you. Uh, Thank you hope so much. soon to visit uh, Egypt again and again. Uh, you are uh, very welcome uh, and, and, and great. Thanks for this amazing talk briefly and uh, uh, in, in target. Yeah, thank you again. Thank, thank you for your nice invitation, Dr. Negan. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye-bye.